Hi, my name is Rajiv Gupta and I'm a Managing Director in Deloitte Consulting. I specialize in strategy, innovation, customer experience, and digital transformation. And I do so within what we refer to as the defense, security, and justice sector. It's perhaps an atypical intersect between functional disciplines and industry, but one I've really come to appreciate and one that I believe is of critically increasing importance. For me, what's particularly intriguing is that I didn't seek any of this out. If you had asked me 14 years ago what I'd be doing 14 years later today, there's no way I could have predicted any of this. The idea that I would be speaking to you, or anybody for that matter, about national security. But I wound up here through a series of seemingly unintended but welcomed experiences, each of which built on and were informed by those prior, and all of which ultimately led me down this path. In retrospect, however, I couldn't be more excited about where I wound up because as an American, I very much enjoy the safety and security I live each and every day. And in doing this work, I have an enriched appreciation now for what the national security community does to avail to me the lifestyle that I enjoy. And I get also to have a hand in shaping the direction the community takes in serving that mission about which we all deeply care. There's been a ton of progress made across the community. We've seen new and sophisticated capabilities emerge, admirable innovations that exploit new technologies, and public-private collaboration with non-traditional industry. And the impact of that progress cannot be overstated. There are still, nonetheless, looming challenges with which the community still grapples, many of which have been brought to light in recent months. So, for instance, rethinking and reinventing the way we work, understanding trust, and how we better promote confidence amongst the constituents who we have pledged to protect, and preparedness for threats to our national security, both those known today and those latent or emerging. And these aren't distinct and separate challenges that can be solved independently. Instead, I'd submit that they are interdependent and that they need to be solved jointly and concurrently. The future of work is here. Now the great work that the community performs has been done so in almost an exclusively classified environment. And that's been the case since its inception. But with COVID-19, quarantine, social distancing, this has all become a significant challenge. In fact, the community and the supporting industrial base have been especially hard hit. It's become difficult to perform sensitive or classified tasks, understandably so, but it's also become difficult to perform those tasks that are routine, mundane, or simply necessary to perform basic business functions. And why is that? We understand that classified information needs to be accessed in secure environments and on secure systems. But what about unclassified functions and information, or those functions that utilize exclusively unclassified information? Do we have the policy, systems, and culture in place to promote more routine work outside of secure environments? Is it possible to apply non-traditional industry security standards in a national security environment and in a thoughtful and responsible manner? It's interesting to think about how investment banks secure privileged access to merger and acquisition information, or how food and beverage companies secure proprietary formulas and recipes used in the products we consume every day or how health institutions safeguard personal health data on each of us. They all do so in physical locations, outside of a SCIF, and on a secure but unclassified technology architecture. What if the national security community could do this too? And if it could, how might that open the community up to broader and more diverse talent? Talent rich with experience, expertise, and skill, technical, hard, or soft, that is perhaps less common within the community today. The future of trust is here. And it's interesting to take a historical look at trust and how prior to the advent of the internet, information was shared, disseminated, and ultimately controlled. There were considerably few people and few but highly controlled means through which information was provided to the mass public. Centralized institutions leverage their standing as an institution to collect, process, and disseminate information through discrete channels. So for instance, the media, TV, print, radio. But now, not only do we have the internet, but the internet has evolved from single point dial-up bulletin board services to the World Wide Web, 
to Internet 2.0 and now an integrated and systemic decentralized web. Is trust conveyed solely on the quality and accuracy of information availed through centralized institutions or rather through decentralized networks of people with similar likes, interests and social values? If the latter, how might the community also tap the power of decentralized trust networks? The future of power is here. And we often think of conflict and security through the lens of direct symmetric threat, specifically military threat. Do we have more tanks and missiles than our adversaries? Is our critical infrastructure more secure than theirs? But increasingly, asymmetric threats consume more and more time, attention, and resource from across the community, and appropriately. But these threats beg the questions that are perhaps less flashy, but equally important. What does having a whole of government approach actually require? What does 21st century diplomacy actually entail? And what strategic advantages do stronger civil societies enjoy? These concepts aren't new and they're certainly not novel, but they are concepts that the community is continuing to diligently solve for in a comprehensive and systemic manner. The pace of change is increasing and it's increasing every day and at an increasing pace. I believe it's our responsibility to put the right minds to task to help the community solve for what is the most wicked of wicked problems. It's all very heavy, it's all very real, and honestly, these are the types of issues that keep me up at night, but they're also what get me out of bed every morning. When I refer to the national security community, I typically refer to it as we, and that's because while I've never worn the uniform or never served as a civil servant, I do consider myself a part of this community. I aspire to be a part of the solution. I aspire to be an individual who works to promote further progress across the community. And I aspire to all of that because I, alongside of each of you, am a direct benefactor of the national security community.